Let's move to our next topic, which is ZBrush interface. And let's dissect the, uh, the user interface of the ZBrush and see what do we have here. Now, as I told you before, whenever you will open ZBrush, you will always see this light box open. Now, the light box, as I told you, is like a container that contains all the tools, brushes, and everything on your tip. It will easily, you can, uh, click on any one of it and it will load so it's like a shortcut so usually you just press light box or comma key to hide them okay and once it is hidden then you have all your interface in front of you and you can easily work on it so let's go one by one to these tools and see what do we have here so light box already we have gone through so if you click on the light box it will load it again and it is draggable draggable means scroll i mean scrollable more than draggable so you can click on any empty area inside your light box and you can easily drag it just like this so it will show you what do we have in the next us uh, like you know areas here so there are a couple of more options which you can drag back and forth to see what do we have here. you have tools you have different sort of brushes you can drag through the brushes and then you have uh, textures and so many other things you have here it's a lot of uh, useful items you have here and they all are basically as a shortcut so instead of going to the file loading them easily they can be accessed through here so that's how the uh, uh, light box actually works also you can search for what you are looking for suppose i'm looking for image 4844 so i can write here the name of it okay and then it will search for it so this is how you can search for whatever you're looking for okay now other thing here is that we can open any file inside this light box suppose i want to open this file uh, leaf.zpl and when i will open it it will open and it will show it to me where it, uh, is it open and it will load it here as well okay and you can see that it is open here and that's all uh, you can do with this and if i will hide this one i can bring it here and it will be on my screen okay so this is a quite handy tool which can be closed or open at any time you want so i will go back here turn it off now let's see what else do you have here. Now sometimes uh, if you are opening up a file inside a ZBrush and you are opening up ZBrush for the first time, you don't know anything about these tools. So if you will roll over, over it uh, over these tools, it will show you a small tip over here, which tells you what it is basically. Okay, any one of these you can go through and you can easily uh, see this, these tips and it will guide you what these uh, buttons will actually do but if you want more information regarding these you can press control on on your keyboard or if you're using mac command on your keyboard and then hover over it so it will give you complete detailed tip, description of what these tools actually do so this is a quite handy option, I think, which helps you a lot when you are working for the first time. So it's like, it gives you a lot of like details here. Now, other thing that we have here is the brushes. The first thing that we have here is the brushes, basically. Let me do one thing here. Let me uh, refresh the whole thing okay and actually it has opened up a new file here let's create a new document i think i have to refresh my zbrush here we go now i will go to my light box and let's go to tools and load some tool over here uh, maybe this one demo head 
Okay, I will double click it here. Now it is loaded here. I will press comma key to hide the light box. Create it here. Go to edit mode. Now let's see what do we have here. We have here brush. And if you click on it, you will see number of brushes here. And ZBrush comes with a lot of different brushes. So you can go to any brush and you can work with it. So uh, we will go to different special brushes in this course, but let's see a one a particular brush which is called chisel brush. So if I will go to, to the chisel brush, what it will do is that it will pop up a, like a uh, like an interface item. Okay, so let's for uh, search for the chisel brush here and. So here is the chisel 3D brush and if I will click on it, you will see it is a, uh, it will give me a secondary interface on the top. Basically what it do is that this brush itself have some certain multiple types of brushes like sub brushes. So one brush can contain different other brushes. So I can go through these okay, by dragging just like the light box i can choose any one of these brushes suppose these are basically uh brushes that have different anatomical uh, body parts like suppose this nose if i was selected and then i can make a nose here okay so who have nose all over his body but just to show you around whereas if i will go to any other normal brush suppose the standard brush so it will not give me that interface because this brush is a standard brush it's a non imm brush imm brush means insert multiple mesh brush okay the brush that can insert multiple meshes so it is not that kind of brush imm brush gives you a secondary interface which pops up now there is an expert mode inside zbrush and what is that expert mode? That expert mode, if you press tab on your keyboard, it will uh, move, remove most of the items from here. Okay. And you will have a complete, uh, you know, empty space here that you can work on. But still, you can get some information uh, like those tools that are hidden now by pressing spacebar on your keyboard. And you can see the brushes are here and other things are here. So you can easily. Uh, go through these. So this will help you. It's come, uh, it's quite handy if you're using expert mode. And if you will press tab again, it will go back to the normal mode. So once you have a brush, for example, whenever you will start with ZBrush, the default brush that you will always have is the standard brush. And by the name, you might have easily guessed what it will do. It will just do a normal sculpting so you can see that it is doing normal sculpting on my screen over here so i can undo that and let's see what else we have here so from here you can take the brush and this is how you want the brush to affect your 3d model okay now if i will click here i will have different options here the first one here is the dots we are in the dots mode right now. So if I will draw something, so you can see that it is drawing with a dots placed next to each other. Okay. It's not showing that because they are close to each other. It looks like it's a, it's a one stroke or something. But if I, if I will go fast, so you can see that it gives me some dots here. Let me go to... Uh, somewhere behind so I can have a plane view here and then here for example if I will uh, draw so you can see there are some dots here uh, another way to show it is that let me subdivide it and now if I will draw so you can see there are dots and these dots are closer to each other so close to each other that it does not show that they are separate from each other but if i will go here i can change it the way i want it now 
another option here we have is the drag rectangle now what it will do is that instead of drawing it uh, normally just like this it by the name as you have might easily guess it will drag that brush stroke as a stamp on my 3d model like if i will click over here and if i will press here and then drag you can see that it is dragging that brush just like it's a stamp okay let me do one thing here let me increase the intensity and show you i will click and drag so you can see that it is actually dragging one stroke the tip of the stroke over here instead of drawing it just like it was doing before so it's quite good if you want to create you know this kind of effect like scale of a monster or a creature on your uh, object on your 3d model so that's how this works okay let me clear it off and what else do we have here is We have freehand. Now freehand is same like the dot, but what difference there is? As I told you, dots will create small dots on your uh, model when you are drawing, but those dots are closer to each other. It's very hard to see if there if they are created through the dot. Freehand creates uh, in the same manner, but without the dots. Okay, so if I will draw with the freehand, you will notice that. It's more like drawing with a complete freehand. But if I will draw with the dots, you will see the drawing is just like this. Okay, almost the same. Other than that, we have here option called spray. Color spray is for the 2D for coloring, but we will go to the spray now. Now, what does the spray do? Spray as a name. It sprays those, uh, like it sprays with this brush on the model. Like suppose if I have used spray and drag over it, it will show, it will create some spray effect. Now these brush settings can be changed down. Like suppose I have for all of them, I have some settings down here. So I have for spray as well some settings here. So there is one placement. So placement is where you want to place on the screen. So if I will reduce it to maybe slight, very small, like, you know, very low value, like maybe I can type here and change it to my uh, value here to something like 0 0.05 or something. And then if I'll start, so you can see the placement is very close to each other. Okay. So let me undo that. And if I will increase this placement and then start drawing, so you can see they are placed not next to each other, but in a variance. One is here, one is here, one is here, one is here. So they are uh, spreaded. So I hope it is clear. So placement is basically, if I will reduce it, so they will place to next to each other very close. If I will increase it, so this placement will be spreaded. Now this is the scale the size of the spray. So if I will reduce it, it will create smaller values. Okay, just like this. And if I will, sorry, I, I decrease that. So uh, with decrease, this will create the, uh, something like this. But if I will increase it, it will create a, a larger value. Okay, I will decrease it a bit. And here is the flow. So if I will decrease the flow, what is the flow? How much amount of the spray should be applied? It's like suppose if you have a spray bottle of a spray paint and you want to do graffiti. If this, that spray paint can is finished and you don't have enough uh, you know, liquid in it and if you will try to spray on a wall, so what will happen? A less amount of liquid will be sprayed on the wall because it's all, 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 uh, it's almost finished or it's, or it's going to be finished. So here is the same thing. If I will decrease the flow, that means the can is getting 
emptied and there is no much of the liquid left. So if I will draw with less, so you can see a less amount is being created. Okay. But if I will increase it, so there will be a lot of uh, amount creating, uh, like will be created. So this is how different values of the brushes work. And it totally depends on how you want it to uh, show on your object and how you want to uh, make it appear on your object. So brush and brush settings are the most commonly used, the most widely used, uh, you can say, options inside the ZBrush. So this is the ZBrush is all about the brushes. That's why it's called ZBrush. Other than these two, we have alpha, texture, and materials here. Now let's see what are these. Alpha is to apply different bitmap details. And it have a lot of uh, options here. You can make your own inside Photoshop or you can download. There are a lot of uh, alphas available online as well. Textures. Textures are to apply different colors. If you want to apply different colors to your object, 3D or model, then it, uh, this uh, texture object, this texture option is used. Then we have materials that shows different way how your models are displayed. If you want to make it metal, you can go and click on the metal. So it will look like a metal. You can change the color if, if you like. If you want it to look like a uh, Ref, uh, more reflective you can choose more reflective options so this is uh, basically uh, the way you want your object to be displayed and this is the default one which is matcap red wax now let me undo the whole thing here and let's go to the top objects over uh, like top options over here what do we let's see what do we have here on the top now on the top, we have RGB intensity. Now, what is the RGB intensity? Is the opacity of the color. If we are coloring our 3D object, so this is the opacity of the color. How uh, visible you want your color to be, and how uh, you know transparent, opaque you want your color to be. So that's uh, it. It uh, you know kind of defines these two things. Other than that, we have here the Z intensity. Now, what is the Z intensity? It is the strength of your sculpting effect. So let me go back here to my stroke and choose the dot. So if my Z intensity is lower, suppose 9, and if I will draw over here, you will see hardly it is creating any effect. But if I will increase it and then start drawing, so you can see the effect is more intense. Okay, so this is what the intensity actually do. It uh, it increases the strength of our sculpt. So that's why it is called the Z intensity. It means the Z axis. Uh, it's a 3D paintbrush tool. That's why it is called Z intensity. Then we have here the size of the brush. This is the size of the brush. You can change the size of the brush. You can make it smaller. So it will become smaller. You can make it bigger you will become bigger so you can change the size of the brush up from here let me undo this and one more thing we have here is basically it's active points you let me drag it here this part this is the active points count this is the total point count so if i will click on the active point count it will show me how many uh you can say polygons we have so actually my screen is quite smaller so let me make it a little bigger so let me yeah now you can see that uh, the active points is showing and the total points are showing as well so active points are basically showing me how many points are active on my 3d model which are you can say the number of polygons so it have 57,000 something that are active right the total is 69,000. Total means like actually the whole thing. For example, if I go to the sub tool, you will notice that, which is uh, I like this is what I explained to you in the last uh, like topic. We have a different type of uh, sub tools layers over here because one model can be 
uh, made out of two or three different sub tools. So this is made out of two. So one is the head, okay, and other one you can see if I will go here is the eyes, okay. So uh, demo head right now is fifty seven thousand. If I will go to eyes, so it is twelve thousand something. And both of them, if we calculate together, it is 69,000. So this, this is what it actually show you the active and the total points. Let me make it bigger again. And let's go back here to the demo head. Now, here we have some more tools over here. The most commonly one we can, you, uh, we can say is this perspective tool. If I click on it, so the perspective tool will be uh, inactivated. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, it will be deactivated. And what we will have here now is the orthographic. So orthographic is a flat angle, but if I will press it here again, so it will give me a perspective view, just like we are looking through a camera, okay? Not as a flat angle over here. Apart from that, we have here floor. If I click on the floor, it will show me the floor. So here we have a floor over here. I can press it here to uh kind of close it back then i have here one tool uh here which is called frame the shortcut is f what it do is that if i press this uh tool it will just bring my object closer to the frame or bring it to the frame this is quite handy suppose if you're working on your object and you lost track of it it goes somewhere here and you don't know where it went and you are just keep on working on it you cannot find it so what you can do Simply you just press uh, F on your keyboard or this button. It will bring back to your screen where it is. Okay, so it's quite handy tool uh, to keep the track of your objects on the screen. Now the most commonly used menu on top is the tool, which is this one. So you can click and you will see all of these here. By the way, this menu is already docked on the right side. You can see that the tool is over here and it is already docked over here. And talking about docking, we can dock any menu wherever we want. For example, you will see here there is a like a hidden panel here. If I would click on it or double click on it, it's like a divider. It's called divider. Basically, when you double click on it, you will see more tools over here. So there is a brush menu docked over here. So if you don't want brush to be here, if you want any other tool, so you can undock the brush by pressing this button, it will close it. And if you want any other uh, menu here, like suppose I want uh, maybe a document and I want this to be here. So I, I will go to the document, go to this option. It will show me a moving icon cursor option. I can click on it, drag it here and drop it. And I will have that docked to the side. I can drag a uh, dock it over here or here and more than one icon. Uh, dock. For example, I can close this one and also go back to the brushes, take the brush and drop it just like here. So I have brush also and a hot document also. And I can double click here to close it all. So you can dock more than one. You might have also noticed that we have here one uh, option here, which is like a thumbnail and then one thumbnail over here. Let's see what are these. This is basically silhouette of your model. So when I move around, you can see the silhouette is moving with it. Now, why do we have silhouette? Silhouette basically gives you a black and white picture or a silhouette of your object. So you can see clearly the shape of it. And this can easily draggable. Uh, so you can make it bigger or smaller if you want it. Okay, so this is you can just click or uh, left click on it. You can make it bigger or smaller, and you can uh, have it on the screen. Here, this one is basically if uh, if I'm working on my screen, I'm just rotating it around. Okay, freely. Uh, we will go to this navigation part in our next uh, topics, but uh, just to tell you here, this option here help us to neg uh, like navigate through this thumbnail. So if I can click on it, I can easily navigate through this part and it will give me orthographic navigation. Orthographic means flat navigation, like left, 
front bottom top so if you click on it and drag so it will give you any one of these orthographic uh, navigation options and then here you can click on these also so it will give you the y axis the x axis the z axis okay so this is a uh, a normal uh, way of navigating through the thumbnail but if you don't want to see these on your screen so what you can do here is that you can just simply go to the preferences here and once you are in the preferences you can go to the cam view and once you will go on the cam view you can oops and you can turn it on or off so when you will turn it off so this cam view will be off or will be turned off from here for example if i turn it off so it is not there but i want to keep it i will keep it on then i will, if you if you want to turn off that thumbnail you can go to thumbnail option okay and then you can turn off the uh like uh, if you don't want to see it as a silhouette you can turn off the silhouette it will show you exact how your model is there or if you don't want to see the thumbnail at all you just click on the thumbnail it will be completely gone but i want to keep it it's quite helpful so i believe that's why i will not turn it off so this is basically the basics of the zbrush interface it's a general interface and we will go into its detail as we move forward in this course and starting with let me tell you one thing it's recommended if you will use the tablet like wacom style tablet to work on the zbrush well i don't use it a lot myself so it means that it's not necessary that you should have tablet but if you have you can create more nice creative results out of it and it will give you a lot more like you can say possibilities but if you don't have it it doesn't matter you don't have to have it okay so what i will tell you here if you have a vacuum style tablet how you can set it up for your work so let me minimize this one and go to my uh, tablet settings okay and let me tell you one thing i don't have a vacuum or who you on or expand i have a very cheaper one which is okay and it's not that good okay it's a it have lagging issue or something like that because i use it not for zbrush i use it for other applications such as i use it for photoshop illustrator or fresco and these kind of application i hardly use it for zbrush it does work on zbrush very nicely but i don't use it most of the time i use my mouse because i'm more comfortable with the mouse now if you have a vacuum tablet so how you will set it up first thing is the screen mapping so i have right now dual screen so dual screen is quite tricky because it will count your two screen as one and if you want to draw anything on the dual screen it will not give you the exact result so how to avoid that here so let me go to the screen mapping now and it is already uh, nicely mapped but what if i will go and turn my dual screen as uh, one screen and see how the result will be now if i want to draw with the dual screen as one here so let's do one thing here let's go here and what i will do here is that i will draw a circle a normal circle here okay so if i want to draw this one here so what i will do is that i will just draw a circle and let's see how the circle is made on the screen itself so now i'm trying to draw a circle and you can see i'm trying to draw a perfect circle but whenever i'm trying to draw the circle it is converting that into an oval shape the reason is that because my dual screen is acting like one screen so i have to adjust it i have to make sure that it is exactly the same size of my uh, tablet otherwise it will keep on giving me that option so let me change this one click it here and now you can see that it is now as one screen 
and you can see over here as well but this is more wider this is not that wide so what i will do here is that i will try to convert this one a bit uh, wider and try to match it with my uh screen over here so now it's quite uh, same size now if i will go back and if i will try to draw here a circle so you can see that that circle is now better than before okay it's not giving me that oval shape of uh, thing so this is how you will set up your uh, screen over here otherwise it will not give you a required result next is these buttons so this stylus pen over here tip will act like your left mouse button so when you will click and draw so you can see it will start drawing it these you can change to this one as the middle mouse button okay and this one you can change it as your uh, right mouse button and you can change from here but i usually want to keep it as it is plus my stylus here is a battery less stylus it does not use uh, it does not have to be charged that's why it does not give me a lot of different options here otherwise if you have a really nice one like Wacom it is you have to charge it and it have a lot of features and you can change a lot of things over there but here this one the one that I have is not that powerful it's just like a cheaper version so I cannot do more with it so uh, here on the other side you can see I have here uh, use Windows Inc which I don't want to use it I will uh, keep it unchecked this one as well the left hander uh, because i use my right hand to draw so i will not uh, keep it left hander so i will keep it as it is so this is how you can do some changes if you have a, a vacuum style tablet thanks a lot everyone for joining my course and following up with me and if you have not subscribed to my channel so please Subscribe to my channel. Also click on the bell icon so you can get the daily notifications. And I will really appreciate if you will watch all my videos online without downloading them. Because I need all those watch time hours. Please just support me. Uh, keep on sharing my videos with your friends. Ask them also to subscribe because I will be coming up with a lot of new great tutorials and full courses. Also don't forget to watch my online live streams and uh, watch the introductory video of the live stream you can also click on this icon on the top right corner where you can find my live stream introductory video where i have explained about all my uh schedule or uh, that i'm will be working uh, on my live streams basically okay guys so take care and see you in the next topic or in the next chapter so by the time, take care and keep subscribing, keep watching and keep the zebra.